Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with an intel report. This series is aimed at giving you an insight into each unit in Command & Conquer Rivals to better understand how to use them and how to counter them. I've had a lot of feedback over the past few weeks and it's clear that you guys want more in-depth information. When I first started this series, the aim was to give a quick, basic breakdown to cover some of the counters and basic tips for use, but I hear you loud and clear that you're after that little bit more. Before we begin, please do note that I'm part of the EA Game Changer program. I have full creative control over my content and was signed up after I started making content for Rivals. Whilst they assist me with assets and other resources, I am not paid for these videos, so if you do find them really useful, please consider donating to my digital tip jar. I've put the link in the description below. This just helps me keep creating content, allows me to keep it ad free, and helps me out buying the new units. So without further ado, today we are looking at the Nod Tick Tank. The Tick Tank is a Nod battle tank specialised for defensive operations. Its unique Barishnikov dual drive tread system allows for both high speed transit and the ability to entrench in the ground, heavily reducing the amount of damage taken from incoming fire. Built from the Nod War Factory, the Tick Tank is mildly more expensive than its cousin the Scorpion. It's also slightly slower firing and has less health, so is more fragile whilst moving around the battlefield. The Tick Tank's real strength, however, lies in its ability to burrow into the ground, significantly reducing the amount of damage it takes from enemy firepower. Unburrowed, the Tick Tank will quickly fall apart to enemy vehicles like the GDI Predator. But once it's set in place, the Tink Tank flips the tables and becomes incredibly stubborn to shift. In fact, whilst the Tick Tank is vulnerable to anti-vehicle infantry like other tanks, it can take a beating for a significant length of time. More than enough time to bring in some support. Against aircraft, however, the Tick Tank is unfortunately useless, as it has no anti-aircraft weaponry. This means that units like Nod Banshees are especially dangerous. As such, I'd recommend twinning the Tick Tank with anti-air units like the Attack Bike, and anti-infantry units like Buggies or Flame Troopers. Ox's Fanaticism ability allows the Tick Tank to move and burrow significantly faster, getting it into position and turning its cannon onto the enemy quickly. Jade can use her Catalyst missile to wipe threats away from the pads, especially any that are close to Tiberium fields, as a burrowed Tick Tank can survive a friendly explosion. In this case, I'd probably swap the Flame Troopers in this sample deck for Chem Warriors. Seth allows you to bring Flame Troopers quickly to your Tick Tank's rescue. Kane's Obelisk has great second phase zone control and allows you to zone off entire pads, but doesn't deal with aircraft. As such, I wouldn't recommend Kane, as his Obelisk is expensive and shares the same weaknesses as the Tick Tank. This makes for a fairly aggressive deck that aims to take the first new quickly bringing in tick tanks to secure the launch pads for the second nuke. I hope that's helpful. Be sure to check out my other intel reports if you're struggling against certain units or looking for tips as to how to best apply a new unit in your deck. Also check out my Acting on Instinct series with analysis of game mechanics and solid advice on how to get ahead in rivals. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe to be up to date and ahead of the game. Happy sailing and see you on the battlefield. Thank you.